table after table after table of books. Yeah. That's great, but you're just, you're literally touching someone's, you know, <laughs> I mean, you're boom, you're right there, you know. Oh, sorry about that. I think I just got the second base with that dude. <laughs> That's what happens, though, yeah. man. Oh, my, oh oh my, my gosh. gosh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and those are great, but they're... Hey everyone, welcome to Comics with Bueller. As always, I'm Bueller. Today is episode 102 of the brand new Coffee and Comics show. As you can see, I'm not alone. I got my good friend Bob here with me. Bob, how you doing today? Doing fantastic. Can't wait for this episode. We got lots to talk about, my friend. We do. You were a little spicy when you got in here earlier today, but you know what? You, you calmed down a little bit, so I appreciate that quite a bit. It's the coffee, man. It's yeah, coffee. exactly. Uh, but let's talk about the coffee, because yeah. you know what? Uh, the coffee is brought to you today by Mocha Express. Mm-hmm. So you stop by there on the way here. And and guess what I'm drinking? Eggnog latte. Woo-hoo. My favorite. My it throws my diet out the window. But you know what? I don't care. <laughs> it's my treat day, so I'm gonna right. go with my eggnog latte. Let's try it out. Now I know the reason why you were wearing a Santa Claus hat in your video last night. <laughs> there you go, man. Because it's eggnog latte for the rest of the year for it's you. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. I, I don't know. Besides the Bueller, mm-hmm. which is also awesome. That's my. It's, it is awesome. My custom drink there. My eggnog is the one of choice, and it's only available for two months out of the year, so not bad. Eggnog, a free eggnog latte every day? I'll take it. So, what yeah. are you having? Uh, I'm my mainstay, cold brew, that has some uh, cinnamon in it and some sugar-free vanilla sweetener. There you go. And it's awesome. Now, you dropped the tasty line. And were you self-conscious that you were saying tasty every time? You know, I, I do multiple coffee videos in a week, and sometimes I say tasty, and sometimes I say awesome. I kind of mix it up. You do multiple coffee videos? <laughs> Who knew? There's only one real coffee video. <laughs> That's true. <huh? laughs> Whatever, man. Um, like Bob said, we got a lot of uh, great stuff to talk about today. We got a great subject. Our subject is Comic-Cons. Man, we miss them. Yeah, big and, time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, honestly... The subject is your best memories or experiences at a Comic Con. There was a lot of great comments, a lot of great experiences that were shared. Uh, somebody even got married at a Comic Con. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. And I'm sure some people met each other at a Comic Con and then got married. Probably got divorced because <laughs> half the half, right? Right. First, first step to divorce is marriage. Correct. <laughs> you can't know. have one without the other, right? <laughs> I haven't heard that in years, man. <laughs> it's a good one, though, right? It is, it is. You can't just go straight and get divorced. Nope. <laughs> you got to get married first. That's right. There you go. <laughs> um, but before we get started, I want to let you guys know that Knock 'em Dead, number one, my very first exclusive comics with Bueller variant, um, it's sold out. So I don't have any copies left. I want to say Ooh. thank you to everyone who purchased them last week. Um, I might have some copies available after they come in. I need to hold on to a few to make sure if there's any damage or whatnot or if I have to replace some. So I'm holding on to a handful. If everything is okay, then I can sell those copies, but really that'll only be like less than five or six, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure you can go to my partner, dakotacomics.com. They're the ones that have the uh, Devil's Red Bride. They have a batch. I don't know how many they're selling online. I know they're selling them in the comic shop in South Dakota, but I think he has a few online. So if you want to go to... Um, dakotacomics.com you can go there see if they're available I think it's really it's less than 100 but if you're still looking for a copy he might have some there until they're sold out so I want to say thank you to everyone who uh, you know really kind of stepped up I have a lot of orders to fill and I've already got all the shipping supplies. I'm good to go. I'm just waiting for the book. The bill is paid. The bill is paid. So I was pretty happy to sign that off and everything and boom send it off and there you go. That's so awesome cool. man. Um, I also want to let you guys know, and this is really cool, we mentioned it last week, Mm -hmm. there is a Comic-Con coming up in Florida on December 12th called Infinity Con, and I am a featured guest. There's actually a picture going to pop up right here. They used a really good picture of me. I think I showed it to you, right? (laughs) You did, you did. And that's pretty cool, because I'm I'm right up there headlining right next to uh, Santa Claus and Sam De La Rosa, I believe. So I'll take it. Up there big time, buddy. (laughs) Yeah, so I mean, you know what, As, as long as everything is open in Florida. I might have to go there and then come back home and then quarantine for two weeks. That's all right. I'm okay with that. I'll come back home, make my mom bring me food. It'll be just, maybe Bob <laughs> stop over just by the window. Here you go, buddy. You bring you some steak. Bring me some coffee or something. <laughs> I'll be okay with that. There you go. But uh, really looking forward to going to Infinity Con and uh, I'll leave a link down there. If you're in the Florida area, it's in Kissimmee, and I know I'm saying that wrong because I saw someone pronounce it correctly, and I already forgot how they did it. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're around that area, December 12th, 
hit me up, man. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to do it, doing that and seeing everybody. And this is being um, pretty much done by our friend Tony at Comic Crow Line and the people at Infinity Con are making this happen. So I want to say thank you to all the people behind the scenes that are uh, kind of stepping up and uh, making sure I get my ass to Florida this year. So <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump into our first five. That's sure. one of our favorite segments. And Bob... Why don't you go first? Sure thing. Uh, this week, uh, I went through and just picked five random comics. I kind of closed my eyes and just picked books out of my collection, and so here they are. This one is Stabity Bunny number one, which was from Comic Tom's Mystery uh, Mail Call Box, which is pretty nice. cool. Uh, then Venom 21, that Clayton Crane cover. I dig that one. Uh, Nightwing number 73. Very like recent book, yep. Uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal Guidebook, the guidebook that came out for it. It helps you along your way. It does. <laughs> it really did. Guidebook. <laughs> Come on. And then uh, one of the kids' homage covers. This is the one for uh, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And there's my first five. Did you get that whole run? I got the whole run. Okay. Is it I good? Got, oh, it's amazing. Really? Uh, I got, Except the last issue. I know Robbie was all pissed off. Oh, because of the way it ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but bottom line, I have almost all the homage covers. I think I only have one other one to buy, and then I got them all. The Goonies one is one I like. Yeah, yeah, that's so, an awesome one. Um, all right, I got my first five here. Mm -hmm. And this is an interesting uh, variety of books, because I'm going to show the book I paid the most money for ever, as far as cash money. Wow, here we go. And here it is, number 266, Uncanny X-Men. Now, how much did you pay for yours? 60 bucks. And got... You know, that was hard for me to pull the trigger. The only reason I paid 60 bucks was because I'm trying to put together my run of, well, at that time, 150 to 300. That was the last book I needed. So that's, I just had to do it. You know, and that's, I was just, obviously you could tell I waited as long as I could because I had every issue besides that one. Yeah. And then my next goal was to put together 94 to 149, which I'm like 10 books away from doing that. So pretty cool. But that's the one I've spent the most money on by far. $60 cash money. Not store credit. Actual dollar bills. I'm proud of you, man. It drove me nuts, man. <laughs> I talked the guy down from like 85. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, my God. And he gave me another book or something like that as well. Oh, funny. I can't remember what it was. But <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. It was the last day of the con, so I'll use that to my advantage. Um, this next one is an indie book and uh, kind of a special one. I, I like this series. I actually have the whole set. This is Dead End Kids, number one. Um, are you familiar with this one at all? I am familiar with it. I remember when it first came out and you were touting it, yeah. but uh, the our LCS ran out of copies, and so I, I ne they never got on it. Yeah, I never got it when it first came out. It took me a while to find them, mm -hmm. and eventually I did get them. I think I ended up getting like issue three before I got the other issues, mm -hmm. And but a really great series. And the reason why I'm bringing this up because the creator, Frank Google, he's actually reached out to me a few times, and he's got pretty much like volume two of this coming out. Oh, wow. And he sent us a little video clip, kind of a commercial, for his new book that's coming out. So if we'll take a minute, we'll go ahead and cut the Frank and see what he has to say. Thanks, Billy. What's going on, guys? I am Frank Ogle, writer of series like Dead End Kids and No Heroin. And I wanted to swing by today to let you know about my new series, Dead End Kids the Suburban Job. Dead End Kids the Suburban Job is the story of three teens in 2008 who are all the loved ones or survivors of folks who died on or because of 9-11. Uh, it's the story of three former friends who are dealing with the long-term effects of the terrorist attacks in their personal lives uh, seven years later, and what happens when these three former friends are brought back together because they stumble across a stolen bag of cash that belongs to a local drug kingpin. Uh, for anyone who didn't read the first series, this is a fresh start. It's a new cast and a new place and a new crime. For anyone who read the first book, it's the original team back together to tell another story that looks and feels like the same but is its own thing. So if Dead End Kids, The Suburban Job sounds like a book you might be interested in, it is up for pre-order right now and will be through uh, December 12th. So uh, get on out to your local comic book shop and tell me you want Dead End Kids. Hey, Frank, that sounds pretty good. You know, like I said, I really enjoyed this first series and also the other book you did, No Heroin, mm -hmm. was also a really great one as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to his uh, next book. So if you guys aren't familiar with it, you know, check it out. Tell your LCS to order you a copy. Um I think it's a good series. I've heard talks like these might get options or something. Really? I don't know. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'm still looking for No Heroin number one, really. Yeah, that's a tough one to find. Yeah. Well, that, well, there was something with that one to where it was gone before they hit the yeah. store. Yeah. So uh, I know uh, 
one of our viewers, uh, Ryan Atkins, mm-hmm. um, if I'm not mistaken, he did the variant cover for it, or exclusive cover for it as well. We talked about that before. So, nice. pretty cool. Um, okay, my next book is uh, The New Mutants, number 73. And we talked about the Inferno storyline, so I just wanted to grab one of the Inferno books and put that up there. Nice. Uh, and I, these next two books were actually sent to us by MarvelousMerchandiseOnline.com. Mm. And these are their exclusive variants. And I'll put their logo up on the screen, but this is Venom number 29. There you go. That's and there's an amazing cover. two covers for that, the A and the B cover. There you go, number 29. Wow. Marvel. Let me say it again. Marvelous merchandiseonline.com they still have some available you can go there I'll put their link down in the description if you want to check them out I want to say thank you to them they're at the uh, Comic Con as well they have booths set up they're based out of Florida and all that stuff nice. so you know what everything kind of works all together for right? sure it's all connected <laughs> so it's going to be a lot of fun but hey guess what Bob what's that they sent you some too what so they didn't uh, just, there you go Bob you get one wow and you get two. Oh man, that is so awesome. So Thank there you, you all go. Very much. Appreciate that. Like I said, marvelous merchandise online.com. Exclusive variant. Their logo is pretty good. I like it. Yeah. That's it actually awesome. is it's, it takes up almost the whole of the back cover mm-hmm. compared to mine, which is like the size of a nickel. <laughs> <laughs> what the whatever, what man. The, right? What the heck? <laughs> anyway, very cool. But that was our first five brought to you by Comic Pro Line. Let's go ahead and jump into our topic. And like I said, our topic is best memories or experiences at a Comic-Con. This is brought to you by Black Box Comics. If you want to check out their website, blackboxcomics.net, you can enter the code Bueller10 at checkout and you save 10%. Also want to let you guys know they got a new book coming out in December, Devil's Dominion. I think I got that right. And then they also have a Kickstarter campaign for their psycho list, but that might be over or maybe it's just a few days less. Yeah. I might have both of those wrong. I don't really pay attention to detail, but you know what? What are you going to do, right? But let's go ahead and jump into our topic. Mm-hmm. And really, this came about because, one, I'm going to a Comic-Con next month, and mm-hmm. we haven't been to any cons this year at all. Nope. I'm really hoping that that happens. Yeah. Fingers crossed. And for two, we're all missing Comic-Cons. And we're all the big ones for the most part, except for... What was the one that happened earlier? C2E2? C2E2 did happen. Yeah, that was the... And then after that, everything shut down. Shut down, yeah. And nothing happened since then. So there's been some little ones here and there, but really that's about it. Yeah. But let's go ahead and jump right into it. And I got the first comment here. And here we go. This is from Sunfed Soul. It said, my favorite part of Comic-Con events is being able to be in the same environment as other people that share... The same passion for everything comic related. It is always a safe place to get your nerd on without judgment. I also enjoy socializing with new people and seeing incredible cosplay. Okay. It's Comic Cons are flipped. Yeah. Okay. Think about it. If you go to a Comic Con and you're dressed like a normal person, you're out of place. <laughs> In most cases, you yeah. don't you're like What's up with that guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, sure. It's it's basically the reverse of real world yeah. is what it is. And you know what? I enjoy that. I don't think I can handle it 365 days a year. No. But, no, you know, for a, for a weekend here and there, Absolutely. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. And there there is no judgment. I mean, you, I mean, there is every walks of life go to a Comic-Con, whether they're in the comic books, gaming, uh, cosplay. It takes all kinds. Yeah. And they all really enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, she's absolutely right. You can go there, get your nerd on. Don't worry about being judged. Like, compare it to where if you went somewhere else, you'd be like, what is up with that dude? Yeah. You know? And it's comforting. Like I said, I couldn't do it all year round. Nope. <laughs> but I could definitely do it for a weekend and stuff like that. I could do it more, for sure more. Yeah. I mean, the thing that I love about it, what she says is, is exactly right. When I walk into a Comic-Con, I feel like this is my tribe. Yes. Right. And and I, I, I mean, if you're if you understand what I'm saying, then I mean, hands down, when you walk into a Comic Con, you're like home. Yeah. And uh, I remember the la- uh, last Rose City Comic Con was the first time I took the Max to go there, and uh, there were a bunch of people on the Max looking at cosplayers on you know the train yeah. and looking out at Rose City Comic Con. Yeah. And one guy in the back was like, 
these are just people who haven't grown up yet. And I thought to myself, man, you have no idea what you're missing yeah, you're out on. Missing out. <laughs> For sure. You tried to grow up too fast. Exactly. Man. He's he doesn't have a tribe. Yeah. It's uh it definitely is. It's you it's like you're waiting in line. Yeah. And you can just talk to anyone in line. Anybody. It, it doesn't matter. And then you go, Oh, you like X Men? Uh, and all of a sudden they become a like, good friend. Absolutely. And stuff. Oh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from uh, you know, out of town or whatnot. And they become friends. Yep. And, uh, you know, or you just run into people you haven't seen in years. And so, and I ran into people that I didn't even know were into that type of thing. Yeah, same with me. And I was like, I didn't, had no, and they were they were too afraid to say yeah. outside of the Comic-Con experience. Yeah. And they're like, oh, dressed up in full gear, man. <laughs> they're going to battle. <laughs> and I'm like, I had no idea. Yeah. You know, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm really into this. And a little, little quiet voice and stuff yeah. like that. I go, well, let the freak flag fly or exactly. whatever it is, you know. That's a mighty big closet, my friend. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Okay, I got the next one here as well. This is from not one, but two tacos. All right. All right. It says, seeing Mr. Stanley at San Diego Comic-Con in early 2000s. That's when you can just go up to the San Diego Comic Con box office and buy a ticket. Yeah. Obviously, that's not the case. So I just wanted to bring up half the comments were meeting Stanley. Yeah. yeah. Um, there were so many Stanley, and there were so many great stories about Stanley and and making friends in line, waiting for Stanley, and waiting all day for Stanley, and all that stuff, and having that experience. Um, I myself. Never uh, met Stanley. Uh, I saw him from a distance. Oh, maybe twenty feet away. Line was out the door. Yeah, you know, and and he'd only been here a handful of times. Um, but that is a lot of people's main moment, and understandably so. Yeah, it probably should be. You know, when it comes to comic books, and you really think of the, I mean, there's the Mount Rushmore, but honestly, the, there's a Mount Rushmore, and then there's one other guy. Yeah. And it's Stan Lee. And whether you want to dispute that or whatnot, you're wasting your time. For sure. To be totally honest. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I myself uh, also never got to meet the man. Mm -hmm. Same with me. I saw him from a distance. And it's one of the things I ultimately regret. Yeah. Because he was too. the absolute cause of so many memories inside of my life. And uh, this week, actually, was the two-year anniversary of his passing. Yeah. And, uh, man, I miss him so much. Yeah, it's, it's something... Actually... I hadn't went to a con for a long time, and this is before I got back into collecting comics. Wizard World was here in town. This is like six or seven years ago, and they had Stan Lee there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to go, you know, uh, maybe see Stan Lee or meet him or whatnot, you mm -hmm. know. And I was totally out of comics at the time. I wasn't into it or anything. I just wanted to go and see Stan Lee. Yeah. And so I went to the con. I don't think I bought anything. I think it was there for maybe a couple of hours, and that's the time when I walked by and saw him, and like I said, the line was was around the corner. I think that was like the first time he'd been here in years. Yeah. So it was just packed. But uh, anyway, a lot of people's memories of Stan Lee and sure. well-deserved. Um, I got the next one as well. This is from what Rajam... What's that say? Uh, Raj Rajama Comics? Rahima. Rahima? <laughs> Last week he gave you the... You know, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. It says, uh, my best con memory is taking my son for the very first time. It was Wizard World 05 Chicago. I took pictures of him with Blade, Deadpool, a Wampa, and a uh, Predator, just to name a few. He loved it and will still chat about it to this day. Thanks for another great video. Um, yeah. Taking your kids, and this is pretty funny because uh, I haven't had the chance to take my daughter. And I regret that. And I just, I wasn't going to cons at the time, you know, when she was here. And now she obviously lives in Albuquerque, and she like you guys know she was on the show a couple of episodes ago, and just the timing when cons are going on when she was here, it just never worked out. Um, I would love to. I think she would really enjoy it. She's older now. I would have liked to when she was younger. I took my son uh, to a few cons, and I think he uh, he was a little bit older as well. This is just a couple of years ago, and uh, he enjoyed it, but I think he more enjoyed. He actually got like a tattoo. He, you know, he got a tattoo and he like met a girl and yeah. stuff. Like that. That's what he, <laughs> that's his memory. That's what usually happens. Yeah, and then, and then I uh, and then I look off and he's talking to Neil Adams about space. <laughs> like, what is happening? You know, he doesn't even know who Neil Adams is. Right. And they're talking to each other about the solar system and stuff like that and the planets and everything. And he really enjoyed that. So uh, 
Uh, he did like Donny Cates. He thought Donny Cates was pretty cool. Uh, that's the time when we got to meet him and interview him and talk and stuff like sure. that. So, uh, but yeah, I wish I would have took my kids when they were younger. Mm-hmm. And uh, but like I said, I'd love to have my daughter go. I'll, maybe I'll go down there to a con in Albuquerque and take her. So yeah, yeah. What about you? you I, your kids? I love this this comment uh, yeah. because one of the things that uh, you know in any relationship, especially with your dad, you always have something to connect with. Sure. Right. For me, with my dad, it was sports. And uh, with my, with both of my boys and my daughter, my, my, my daughter knew all about comics when she was younger, but with my boys especially, uh, we always connected over comics. Yeah. And uh, I didn't get to take them when they were younger because cons weren't a big thing back then. Uh, but definitely, um, you know, when they, the resurgence came about, I definitely took both of my sons and they were great moments. I think exactly. one of my favorite moments of all was the first time both of my sons came to me in, in, at individual times and asked me about yeah. comics. And it was just like, there's nothing like that in the world. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's those moments with your kids. Like you said, there are certain things you connect with certain parents. Uh, me and my kids used to always go to, when they were younger, younger, we'd ride our bikes yeah. up to uh, the ice cream shop. And almost every day after school, they'd, I'd, they'd follow me or I'd have that little basket that they, they could sit in mm-hmm. and stuff. We'd go to the 31 Flavors and get ice cream. That's awesome. And we always played. That's one thing that uh, we always did. We just played. Yeah. I like playing, you know, just going to the park and just goofing around and stuff. We always did that. So <laughs> it was fun. Um, all right. I got the next one as well. Look at that. I'm reading four in a row for you. Look at that. This next one is from Half Moon's Picks. It says, I love Comic Cons. I do miss the free autographs from the early to mid 90s. I still got them all. I now take my kids to pass on all the fun. Can't wait to go again. Yeah. Yeah, autographs cost money, you know. They do. They I do. do notice that uh, if you get them personalized, mm-hmm. a lot of times they'll they'll waive their fee. Yeah. Because I think they're just, oh, this guy's flipping it type thing, especially when you see the people with the stacks of books. Yeah. Um, but if you say, hey, can you sign it to Bueller or to Bob or whatever, or write something or whatnot, I, I found that a lot of people will just, they'll just do it yeah. for free. Except Chris Claremont. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Chris. No, no, no hard feelings, buddy. Yeah. But, well, uh, you know, when it, when it comes to autographs, you know, I, I found the same thing. I think uh, artists, when they see if you want it personalized, yeah. I think it even means more to them. Because yes. it means you're not trying to make money off of it. Yeah. Uh, I, I think one of the ones that was the most... Uh, um, gr- misgruntled about it that it was visibly you know disgruntled about it sure. was uh, Matt Fraction uh, I had him personalize a book but then I also had the CGC guy waiting there because I wanted to get um, the the, uh, the Hawkeye book yeah. you know and, uh, and and you could see he was just like oh it, it's one of the witnesses sure. and he was not cool with it yeah. you know and uh, I got charged a fee yeah I know that uh, and Neil Adams, mm-hmm. his signature is like fifty bucks. Yeah, the, whether he personalizes it or not. Yeah, but I have heard that it, he'll do them for free for children. That's awesome. So if I, if it's like a kid like Billy or whatnot, you know, and uh, hey, can you sign this for my son or daughter, whatever it is, little kid, he'll do it and personalize it. And I could be wrong, but if that's the case, that's pretty cool. That is cool. That's a nice little thing to have. I do notice this is what I like. And uh, some artists and writers do this. Some just do it for free. It's no big deal. I like this. The first signature is free. Everything after that, they charge a fee. I'm okay with that because I'm not looking to get a bunch of autographs of the same person. I just one, I'm good to go. Yeah. You know, because um, and they do that because they recognize people are trying to flip or whatnot. And we've talked about that before. We sat in line. The guy had a hundred hundred books for Chris Claremont to sign. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, come on, dude. And that was back when he wasn't charging. Sure. So, anyway. well, and there are a few artists, you know, and big names out there who don't charge at all. Jim Shooter doesn't charge at all. Yeah, he doesn't charge. You know, and th- that's awesome. And yeah. then there, I think, at the Washington State Summer Con, uh, Chris Claremont actually, your first signature was for free, and then he charged after that. Nope, he charged me. Really? I told you that, man. You must have got there at the wrong time, man. <laughs> after I did this panel, I know, right? <laughs> I think he got overwhelmed at that con because he was the most popular guy there when it came to the lines give me a break <laughs> all right Bobby, you're up next just trying to spin it positively yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right this one comes from a grommet 37 he says my fondest memory of a convention is from 30 years ago when i went to what was probably my first real convention hosted by the great eastern conventions at the new york penta hotel back when cons were still mostly just people searching through long boxes for that long forgotten classic personal grail comic or a missing issue from an otherwise unbroken run just to be in a packed ballroom 
at an old school hotel with the smell of thousands and of tons of old newsprint with most of the participants engaged in digging through bins was such a scene from a lost era when cons were almost nothing more than scaled up flea markets and hadn't yet totally developed into huge pop culture events they would become as the Wizard Magazine era wore on. I mean, I know I used to set up at those ones when I was a teenager. I used to have booths in the Memorial Coliseum. Mm-hmm. It was just what he described. That's yep. what it was. Yeah. Here's the thing. Those are great. I've been to cons where they didn't have any comic books. Wizard World is a horrible... I'm sorry. and I've They invite me every year. And every mm-hmm. year I go down there and I'm even more disappointed every year. Yeah. But the Wizard World Comic Con, the last one I went to, I have more comics in my house than was at that whole Comic Con. Right. And I was like, are you kidding me? Um, but I do like some of the other aspects. I think the best Comic Cons are the ones that combine, that are able to combine both. Right. I like all the pop and the flair and the costumes and all the writers and artists and stuff. And I want to be able to go hunting for comics. Sure. You know, and the Washington State Summer Con, great example of how you manage both. Um, they had celebrities, they had uh, creators, tons of creators. Yeah. They had a ton of books, you know, for you to go and look for books. You could pretty much find whatever you wanted. And they had all the other stuff as well. Yeah, tons of attractions around it going yes. on as well. and it was just like, this is perfect. And it wasn't overwhelming. You know, they spaced it out well, you know, so it wasn't just crammed in there. And uh, it was awesome, you yeah. know, in comparison to some cons. We would go, it's not a con, but we've talked about it. It's called a Frankenstein, Frankenstein swap. swap meet. Mm-hmm. It's just a, like in a Eagle's Lodge or whatnot. And it's, you know, pretty much you're squished in there. Yeah. And it's just table after table after table of books. Yeah. That's great. But you're just, you're literally touching someone's, you know. <laughs> I mean, you're boom, you're right there, you know. Oh, sorry about that. I think I just got the second base with that dude. <laughs> That's what happens though, yeah. man. Oh, my, oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and those are great. But they're, they're, they're time. If it needs to be spaced out, yeah, you know, yeah. the, that's the reason they only do those like once every four months for sure. And, uh, but I do like the combination of both. I think the both take the pop and, the, and all the great things going on at the con with a bunch of comic books. It really works together when they yeah, mash them up. Absolutely. They both have their place. You know, I've, I've, you know, complained quite often that comic cons are really not what traditional comic cons were. That's what he's talking yes. about. Uh, they're more pop culture events. But the combining of the two, I think, is a great combination because, I mean, it gives you all the visuals. You get all the, you know, the, I love Artist Alley, whether it's big name artists or just guys that are out there showing off their stuff. Yep. You know, and there's so many different things that you can do. It is an, an actual event, and exactly. I love it. Um, and But also those old school swaps that we're talking about, I still love those because yeah. that's what I kind of cut my teeth on. Yep. You know, when we go to the Frankenstein swap, the, you know, there's... There's hardly anybody that you look across the room and you'll catch eye to eye, you know, because there's all these heads down just doing this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, and, it's an interesting time. And, and you know, I, I find that I, I can find some of the <coughs> best deals or finds yeah. uh, quicker there than any other place. Yeah. I wouldn't take my kids to that. No. There'd be no reason to. Yeah. But I'd take them to a Comic-Con, no problem. For sure. So. For sure. All right, Bob, you got the next one? This one comes from Daniel Distwalo. He says, I once went to New York Comic Con, and it blew my mind and expectations away. My favorite part was Artist Alley and meeting a bunch of artists I love. But the highlight for me was meeting Clayton Crane, watching him draw, and signing my book. Thanks, Bueller. Love the show. Um, That's such an important part of uh, Comic Con is the creators and Artist Alley. And just the artists who were there who were not published artists. Yeah. Okay, because, I mean, you get your people that you know, the Clayton Cranes, the Claremonts, and the... You know, or whoever, and then you get artists that are just amazing mm-hmm. that really don't have any published work, and uh, it's a little bit cheaper, which is kind of nice. Sure, and they do commissions and stuff like that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoy that. I, I mean, I'll walk to Artist Alley just to see what they're working on. You know, I'll just walk there and go back like a half hour later, walk down to see what's going on and sure. stuff like that because it's there's so many different art styles that you get. And, I mean. I think it's probably the same everywhere, but we're, I think, maybe a little bit more here in Portland area because it kind of goes with the hand in hand with all the publishers that are around yeah, here. Yeah, absolutely. Stuff. So we, well, maybe we get a little bit more. But uh, I've found some really interesting things that I wouldn't even. I mean, there was one where, like, this one artist, like, he just 
all the characters were butts. I saw that. Or something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like just like butts. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay. And you wouldn't think twice about it, but then you're like, I was like, that's pretty good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't know. That's great stuff. I yeah. mean, you can find stuff like that all the way through. And, and you're right. We have probably at Rose City Comic Con, we have probably a larger artist alley than you would think for a show of that size. Sure. And it's, it's just amazing. Uh, and the thing that I do when I go through there is I usually look for different artists that I can uh, do commissions with. And a lot of them are really open to that. You yes. know? As a matter of fact, I think a lot of them are there more for that than anything else. Absolutely. You know? And so, uh, it, it, and, and then again, you know, for me, my favorite thing is meeting my favorite artists and writers, uh, big name creators uh, that are there at the shows, yeah. so I can sit down and talk to them, talk to them about certain things in history that I, I know about, though you know those particular comics, or, or just the work that they've done. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and here's the thing, you know, during this whole time when all these cons are shut down, a lot of these artists and stuff, you know, this is how they make their living. Yeah, and they just don't have the opportunity to do it. So we're we're still here for you guys. We're still waiting for the day to come when these uh, cons start coming and we're, we're saving our pennies for you. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Uh, you know, get some commissions done. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So. Um, all right, Bob, you got the next one as well. Sure thing. The next one comes from Yamato9501. Oh, you got that one. Good. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, mine was meeting Rob Liefeld in 2018. Somebody has uh, also a love for Rob Liefeld there. There's a lot of people. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, man. I collected his comics that he drew in the early 1990s as a teen, so seeing him decades later in person was awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, who haven't you met that you still can meet? Um, there's a well, I, there's a long list of people. Really? I mean, the one one of one, one of the uh, ones I haven't met yet is uh, Anne Nocenti. Okay. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing her. Uh, Ed Brubaker, mm-hmm. Mark Wade. I still haven't met them yet. Um, I mean, I, I can keep going, but there, there's there's a number of them. That's the main ones. Well, the name, main ones I want to get signed on my Daredevil poster. Yeah, uh, I do. <laughs> poster, come on, man. If he had, if he had, without the poster, take mm-hmm. the poster because he's got a Daredevil poster. He's getting everyone to sign it. Mm-hmm. Take that out. If there's one that you haven't met yet, nothing to do with the poster. Who would it, who would it want it to be? Bill Sinkevich. Really? Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> uh, mine. He said it. I I've never met Rob Liefeld. Ah, never. I've met. A lot of people, and uh, but for some reason, Rob Liefeld has avoided me. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, but I would love to meet Rob Liefeld. I have mutual friends uh, of Rob Liefeld that might be able to help me out. I'm just afraid to ask. Yeah, to be totally honest, um, he's one. Another one is Alex Ross. Yeah, and obviously we put these Alex Ross books up here. Um, I'm a big fan of Alex Ross, fellow person born in Portland as well. Um, he actually has that new art book that's coming out in, I think it's December, or no, it's the, it's this month, mm-hmm. I believe, or maybe it's next month, I don't know for sure, but it's this unseen artwork for 2020, and we'll put a little picture up here to kind of show you it, but I put it on my Instagram, and he, he's got stuff in there from Flash Gordon, one of my favorite movies. I interviewed Tom, or Sam Jones for Flash Gordon himself. That's awesome. That was a lot of fun. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm looking forward to this book. I mean, if you're looking looking for his artwork, it's like 40 bucks, and I'm pretty sure it's going to sell out because most of the stuff that he does like this sells out. But I'd like to meet him. I'd also like to, I'd like to meet Matina just to see, just to call him Funky Cold Matina. <laughs> Seriously. Just I if did, he knows it. <laughs> just to see if, he, if he's heard that before. Right, And just right. for him to look at me and say, so you're the guy. Yeah. You know, I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. That'd be awesome. But Rob Liefeld is the one I'd want to meet for sure. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the one I want to meet the most, I've kind of crossed off my list because he really doesn't do a lot of personal like signings anymore, is Joe Quesada. I mean, he's, he's one of my favorite artists of all time, and uh, but yeah, I would love to meet him. There you go. This next one is from Jonathan West. He says, I miss being able to see the selection of different vendors and books. Cons always have a large variety of dollar boxes, and you can find rare books to complete sets or maybe find a deal on a book that's getting hot at the market. It's also a great way to get away from the wife and kids for a day of freedom. <laughs> My God! A day of freedom. You actually wrote that? <laughs> yes. A day of freedom. I get to go to the con. Like, oh! He's counting down that weekend all year long. Freedom. That, and this oh is the... This is the uh, Braveheart Freedom. Freedom! <laughs> oh, I can't believe you wrote that. 
But uh, that reminded me, and he's right, you can find great books. And we, we talk about that. But there's actually a, did you meet Casey and his wife at the, at the Rose City Comic Con? Just a little guy. Anyway. I'm not positive. Uh, Casey, if you're watching, he's, he's he lives here in Oregon. Mm-hmm. Or Pacific Northwest. He's got three kids. Does he? They left them at home. Did they really? Yes. <laughs> this was their vacation. Him and his wife came to the Comic Con and left the kids at home or with someone or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, where's the kids? He was like, I didn't think to bring the kids. <laughs> he, he was like insulted that way. The same right, where the kids right, are at. Right. But they're in the comics too. Yeah. So, but. Uh, I guess I can understand it that way. I mean, it's like you want to enjoy the thing that you enjoy the most yeah. and not have to worry about a kid going over and grabbing a comic book and bending it and you have to pay for it, you know, or yeah. anything like that. I can just see this guy going home that day after a long day at the con, walking in there. Uh, so much for my freedom. <laughs> it's over. <Yeah>. Done. <laughs> Gotta wait till take the care. garbage out. Damn it! <laughs> it's like a conjugal visit. That's just oh my over gosh. <laughs> uh, okay, I got the next one here as well. Um, this is from Hydra Collectibles. Uh, let's see. He says. Like so many, my favorite Comic-Con moment was meeting Stan Lee here in the UK back in 2012. At the time, I was newly back in the comics, and meeting Stan was too great of an opportunity to turn down. I hunted everywhere, tearing my childhood home apart, looking for my first comic, Amazing Spider-Man issue 06, the first appearance of Lizard. However, could not find it, so instead I opted to get a reprint sign. Meeting Stan was amazing, pun intended, and it ignited my interest once again in the collecting hobby. That's pretty cool. That like, cool. That's what we said earlier about the Stan Lee factor. Yeah. He saw Stan Lee was in this town. That's mm-hmm. what I did. Yeah. I wasn't collecting comics, but he was going to be here. So I was like, I want to go and meet this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, Hydra, he's saying exactly the same thing. Um, I wanted to read that because there's also something really cool coming up. Because he actually does a YouTube channel. Yeah, I was just going to say, give him a shout out because he does a lot of great content. Yeah, and he actually informed me of a certain content that's coming out this week. Mm-hmm. And it's going to pop up on it here. He did an interview with uh, Kevin Eastman. Did he really? Yes. Wow, way and, to go, bro. Uh, well, the creator of uh, Turtles. Turtles, yeah. And uh, I'll put a little thumbnail up there but it's and a link to his channel down below. So go check it out. I've been on this channel a few times. He's a big Lost fan. We talked about comics and a bunch of stuff. I've been on there as well. Yeah, he's he's a friend of mine. But to have uh, Kevin Eastman on there, I think that's pretty cool. Very and, cool. And uh, I, I can't think of Eastman doing too many interviews, to be honest. Right. So kudos to Hydra Collectibles for putting that together. And like I said, go check out his channel. Subscribe and uh, watch the interview. I think it's later this week. It might be tomorrow. I don't know for sure. But uh, very cool, man. Very cool. Very cool. cool. All right, Bob. You got the last two. Sweet. All right. Uh, so this one comes from Raider Mike 510. He says, my favorite memory of Comic-Con is that it also got me into cosplaying. I love seeing people happy whenever they see me cosplaying as Deadpool or whoever I am at the event. I used to be a loner. So most importantly is that I met so many friends within this community and has been growing since I started in 2016. That's a great comment. Yeah. I, I like, I've never done cosplay before. I like looking at cosplay late. I like looking at cosplay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you oh, mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, you know, I did a cosplay video. It's just ladies. It's wonderful. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Uh, um, the trick is to get it. Oh, I shouldn't share all that information. I'll save it for some other date. Oh, my gosh. Um, but uh, anyway, Bob, you do some cosplay. Yeah, you know. Um, uh, actually, I'm going to pop up a picture up here on the screen of your cosplay that from last year, which is yeah. awesome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, so uh, I don't do cosplay very often. Uh, I'm very meticulous. And so if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right. Yeah. And uh, because you know of my weight and it was just the perfect time, uh, I went as the Kingpin. Yeah. And not the Netflix version of Kingpin, but like original, you know, uh, comic book Kingpin. And, yeah. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Uh, the costume or the cosplay came off so well. Uh, I think I was stopped about a thousand times that day for people wanting to take pictures with yeah. me. It was it was an awesome experience. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I remember I have seen you dress up that before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think a picture, one other time, a picture yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. So to see you all in your 
all done up and stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah. uh, do you have any cosplay that you wanted to do? I'm working on one right now with a guy that is uh, very good at Warbler. Uh, you may have seen him at Rose City last year. He went as Groot. Uh, okay. Amazing, amazing Groot costume. And uh, we're developing um, a Doctor Doom suit for me. Nice. Yeah. Very I don't, cool. I, hopefully it'll be ready by next year. What about that Wonder Woman suit you got in your closet? You know, I, 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 you know, I, I gained so much weight. I don't think the thong and all that stuff. Wait, wait, never mind. Yeah. Gross. <laughs> He said it was his. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bob, you got the last one. All right, last one comes from Christian Ramirez. He says, uh, I've only been to one Comic-Con because I'm poor and can't afford to go very often. Yeah, they are expensive. But when I finally got a ticket, uh, it was one for me and one for my girlfriend. She wasn't into comics, but it's the girlfriend, so I was required to spend the money and to bring her. Uh, just before it was time to go, she broke up with me and left me with an extra ticket. I gave, I gave it to my cousin, who was actually into comics and had way more fun with him than I ever would have with my ex. That's awesome. <laughs> I have so many stories from our time, like getting a Neil Adams signature and buying art, but the best memory is that my cousin was excited to see they had a Super Smash gaming section set up because he was always bragging about how he was the best player around. <laughs> my God, Comic-Con people take that game serious my cousin lost every single game <laughs> he played that day rage quit and refused to go near the gaming section again <laughs> good times <laughs> uh, I, I like that they have added the, the gaming thing so the, yeah. the last one i went to they had like an arcade set up a free arcade. it was a retro it was yeah a retro. the retro arcade uh -huh. i enjoyed it me and my son went in there for like a couple hours oh yeah just playing old you know retro games uh pinball and stuff like that i went in there and played defenders for like half an hour yeah i liked i i I see the booth set up, you know, and the, they had that one, I don't know if it was last year, but they literally had a booth set up on the floor and it looked like a 70s living room. Yeah, yeah. And with like Pong and stuff like that. I thought that, that was the, the, the retro section. Yeah, that was really cool. So I enjoy stuff like that. I like the the fact he says my cousin rage quit. <laughs> <laughs> you just see that guy throwing a fit, damn it. <laughs> I just see somebody throwing a controller or putting their hand through a TV screen. You know? um, there is, I will say this, he mentioned that uh, the Comic-Cons are expensive. Yeah. There is a way around that, and I've actually done this. Um, volunteer at the con. Yeah. Volunteer at the con, and whether you volunteer for all three days or whatever it is, or you volunteer for an hour, they will give you a access to the con. Yep, exactly. And uh, I did that for one of my cons. I literally volunteered. I stuffed bags for two hours and they gave me a weekend pass and uh they were okay with that you know yeah and that didn't cost them nothing you can also go to your lcs and mm -hmm. ask if they're going to go and if they got a lot of long boxes that they're taking you can ask them I'll, i can come help you there you go and that'll get me into the con as well if, if you don't mind yeah it doesn't hurt to ask yeah so there, there are other options um uh the volunteer one i think is you know, you just go to their website, yeah, and you fill it out, and then you're good to go. Because I don't know if they always need help. Yeah, they always need help. So, and like I said, don't feel obligated to volunteer the whole time. Just half a day, a couple hours, maybe one day, and enjoy the rest of the two days, or whatever you want to do. So, I have friends that volunteer at every con. Doesn't matter who the who's putting it on, they volunteer at every single one of them. And uh, the one year I volunteered, they're like, "Are, are you still volunteering?" Oh, I go, "I already did my part." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I stuff bags for like an hour. Like, right, right. Okay, let's go around the con. <laughs> so, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> uh, anyway, that is our uh, topic. So that was kind of great fun topic. talking about the con. A good uh, does, doesn't replace the actual real con. No, no, that's And, sure. uh, you know, one, a little quick side note. Those virtual online cons, I can't stand them. Yeah. Uh, they're just not for me. I know there are other places are trying to do them and stuff. You know, I understand what they're trying to do. Yeah. Um, but they just don't. No. I, the only thing I enjoyed about those on you know online cons was at San Diego Comic Con and the uh, DC one was the trailer drops. Yeah, that's right? pretty much and, it. And that's all I would have watched them for anyway. So. Yeah. so nothing beats the real thing. Nope. Um, all right. Let's go ahead and switch over to our final five. Sure. And Bob, you want to go first? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I went in and uh, picked out uh, to show some Daredevil love because, you know, that's what I do. Yeah, I know. And I uh, actually got these uh, uh, for a pretty uh, decent price from Eric Strubble. We talked about him earlier. Sure. And these uh, were some issues that I needed to fill some holes in my runs. So here's uh, issue number 212. 
And uh, here's some uh, issue number 237 with some claw action on there. And uh, issue number 209. Issue number 279. And then issue number 239. And there you go. Some Daredevil action. Showing them some love. There you go. I have independent action. Sweet. Indies. Yes. So uh, this is Stillwater number two. I missed it when it came out. Mm -hmm. And I just had to buy it just the other day. I read it. Loved it. Yeah. Loved it. It's a good book. Uh, I forgot to add it to my pull list. That's why it wasn't in my box. So I took care of that. Um, these are just some independent books I just picked up just yesterday. Um, this is uh, Liberator number one by Black Mask. I don't know much about that one, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, the Goon number one. I think this is my second copy of that one. Still like to get into that book. I hear a lot about it. Really? You can have it. Here. You can have that. One. Really? Yeah, it's uh, it 50 cents. Thanks, man. So, and like I said, I think I have another copy of it. Sweet. Um, and then I got Truth, Justin, and the American Way number one. I don't know what that is. Just kind of look kind of funny, so I had to get it. Interesting. And then I got the Steam Man by Dark Horse Comics number one. They had a bunch of number one independent books. Nice. At, you know where Coin and Corner is in Oregon City? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you ever go there looking for comics. I haven't. But they literally have three long boxes of independent books. Really? Just like this, with like number one through ten of each one of them. Interesting. And so I bought like a bunch. Nice. So they're 50 cents. So sure. I couldn't complain one bit. Can't, so very can't, cool. Can't complain at all about that. Uh, so let's go ahead and switch over to our next uh, segment, which is Robbie's Pick of the Week. Hey, everybody. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups from Pop Culture Philosophers. Today, I'm drinking a Stumptown Cold Brew, extra bold, extra black, no sweetener. I hope you're enjoying your coffee. Hope you're enjoying the show. And my Pick of the Week is Red Mother Number 10 from Boom Studios. Man, this was an awesome book this week. Uh, yeah. Just to tip my hat, it was also my pick of the week. Yeah. Did you get a chance to read it? I did read it, and it's actually going to come up on our uh, next segment. But uh, I will say this about this book. I Last week I said, hey, this is the one I'm looking forward to reading. Okay, And I actually, I lied to you guys. I actually read it before last week's video. <laughs> so I actually already read it. But I, but I just couldn't say nothing because I have to sign certain agreements or whatnot. And... Uh, so I already knew what it was, mm -hmm. and I was really excited. I was really excited to hear other people's response to this book because this series has kind of dipped mm -hmm. uh, over the last few issues. But this really? one, yeah. I love the last two issues. Really? Yeah. yeah, I thought it kind of dipped. But this one knocked it out of the park. Yeah. And then I hear Robbie's review, and it's obviously his pick of the week, mm -hmm. Pop Culture Philosophers. He really enjoyed it. Uh, Will from Hero and the Kid, that was like his pick as well. He loved it. Now I hear that you liked it as yep, well. Yeah. So it's nice to know I wasn't alone nope. picking this one. <laughs> but uh, like I said, um, I, I had already read it last week. I just couldn't say nothing. But great book. And you guys picked a really good one. Robbie, Absolutely. if you're not familiar with Robbie, go to his channel, Pop Culture Philosophers. He reviews all the books every Tuesday night for all the books that come out on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And he does non-spoiler reviews, best reviews on YouTube and my book. Thank you, Robbie, for picking another great pick. Sometimes you pick ones that Bob's don't like and he's not aware. <laughs> but anyway, can't go wrong with that one. Nope, absolutely. Um, so let's go ahead and go to our newest segment. We talked about this last week. Mm -hmm. And this segment is called, Was It Good? And this is brought to you by Scout Comics. You can go to scoutcomics.com and enter the code Bueller mm -hmm. and you save 10%, which is kind of cool. But uh, this is an interesting uh, new area. We're going to talk about three books that we read this week. We told you last week which ones we we uh, were going to read, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to tell you if they were any good. So, Bob, you want to ask me? Go ahead. Sure thing. So the first one that you mentioned was uh, Taskmaster Number 1, miniseries by Marvel Comics. What would you think? Um, I didn't like it. Uh, I didn't think it was very good. I thought it was really goofy, mm -hmm. and uh, I wasn't looking forward to that. Now, I know some people like the goofiness with Taskmaster, for me, it didn't do anything, and uh, it starts off with him and Bullseye playing golf, you know, just goofing around on a golf course and stuff like that. And uh, from the very beginning, it just threw me off. I didn't, I didn't like it. So that one, unfortunately, was it good? Nope, I didn't think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great, great. Okay, so next one, punchline number one. What'd you think about that? Uh, well, I have a copy of it here, mm -hmm. so I'll just go ahead and put that up there real quick. Uh, so punchline number one. Was it any good? I don't know. Uh, I don't care about the character. The character hasn't grabbed me yet to where I'm like invested in the punchline character herself. The story was fine, but 
if someone would say, hey, was this a good book? I'd probably say no. You know, it just really didn't grab me that much. You know, I, I don't like the whole social media, you know, type thing as far as like how she's in the, I'm popular because of social media. The and, podcast and all yeah, that. Yeah, I'm like, that's the villain, you know, social media person or whatnot. I'm like, okay, you know, whatever, you know, I, I need something more tragic. You know, like she runs into the, she runs into Joker like one time, like when she was younger. And then Batman breaks in like 10 seconds later and she's changed from that point on. Right. And then she morphs that and two years later, now she's like a stone cold killer, you know. Yeah, but I mean, really that that is the tragedy. Because she's trying to basically find the punchline to give to the rest of the world. And that's the point. She's never going to find it. And yeah. that's the tragedy. Yeah, that's a tragic book. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right. Next one on your list, Red Mother number 10. Red Mother, I think uh, that's an easy one to say. Yeah. Was it good? Yes. Uh, I loved it. It was my pick. It's uh, It was from start to finish. There's a little twist at the end. I didn't really see coming that much. Uh, I liked the, them having the Red Mother character in here and stuff, you know. And there was uh, the artwork was really good. Uh, the storyline was good. The action was good in the book and stuff. It definitely picked up. And as far as pace wise, this is a lot better paced book than the other ones. You know, I mean, there's a lot more going on in this book than the last few issues. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how much longer this series is going. I think it's supposed to be an ongoing, but normally Boom doesn't do a lot of ongoing books. Yeah. They Actually, it's, wrap... it's it's ending on issue 12. Is it 12? Yeah, yeah. that's kind of what and I thought. I was just talking to Robbie about that this morning. and uh, But this is one I could see being an ongoing series. I wish it was an ongoing yeah. series. Yeah, I, Although, honestly, I'd be okay with it. If they wrap it up on 12, mm-hmm. and if it, if it stays with what they're doing, and like this issue, and number 11 and 12 were very similar, I'd be okay with it. Yeah. Calling it good. Here's our story. It's set. And, be all right. But uh, was that one good? Yes, that one was good. Yeah, for sure. All right, Bob, let me ask you. Uh, you picked Kick-Ass versus Hit-Girl number one. Was it good? It was all right. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> I, I mean, it wasn't, It wasn't. wasn't great. Nothing to write home about. Uh, but it what didn't wow me. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the book suffers from the fact that uh, Mark Millar or Mick Miller and uh, John Romita Jr. are not the writers and, you know, and creators on sure. this. And I think any book that's creator-owned, when they have somebody else do the book, uh, it it suffers from that, so yeah. I think that that is the thing that makes it less of a a draw because it just didn't grab me. All right, so not bad, not good. Yeah, nothing to write home about. And you got you got to pick one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next one you picked was uh, Taskmaster. No, yeah, total the same crap. one. Was total it crap. total crap? Okay, total crap. that's an I easy mean, one. It, it, look, I mean, I hate when Marvel puts out these little mini series and and they take a character that I love. And they don't take it seriously. Yeah. This book was put out directly because of the fact the Black Widow movie was coming out. And it was supposed to be coming out in conjunction with the other Black Widow book that was going on. And uh, it, it was crap. I hated it. I mean, yeah. don't take... I mean, never mind. It's done. All right. No, <laughs> not good. Uh, the last one was Strange Academy number five. Was it good? Absolutely loved it. It was there almost my pick of the week. Uh, I think what... Uh, uh, Scotty Young and Umberto Ramos is doing is amazing. I wish they, they put teams like that together all the time. Uh, it is slowly becoming probably one of the best books of 2020. Very nice. Good series. So let me ask you, what books are you looking forward to reading this week? What are A lot your of great books. A lot of great books coming out this week. So um, one of them would be We Live, number two. Can't wait for that book. There you go. Aftershock. Uh, by Aftershock. The other one would be Ice Cream, uh, Ice Cream Man, number 21. That's by finally Ange. coming out. Finally coming out. And uh, then I'm kind of uh, interested in the Symbiote Spider-Man King in Black number one. There you go. You know, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get every issue, but I'm excited about this whole event. So we'll see. There you go. What are you looking forward to? Uh, well, I got them written down here. So I'm looking forward to Venom 30, which is the final uh, uh, story arc for that uh, virus thing or whatever, yeah. the future or whatever it is. Uh, Big Girls number four. I really enjoyed that series so far, and it's just moving right along. Uh, and then the next one is Something is Killing the Children, number 12. Yes. And uh, that might be one I've already read. You don't never know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, definitely looking forward to that. But honestly, next week is a really, or this week is a good week of books. Amazing. Those are the ones that we're going to review, but just some other ones. Uh, Batman 103, uh, Stillwater, number three, and like you said, Ice Cream Man. There's a lot of really good books coming out this week, so yeah. it's going to be hard to uh, uh, not want to read all those other ones as well. Oh. So. There you go. That's our segment on Was It Good? Let me guys, let us know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this segment or if you want us to change it up a little bit. 
But shouldn't it be basic? Was it any good? No. It was, apparently, he thinks ones are crap. You know, <laughs> it and was. It, it was it good or was it not good? So I mean, it's pretty basic, right? <laughs> yeah. um, let's go ahead and go to our final segment, and this is back. It's been on hiatus for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what to watch. And this is basically programs that we are watching currently that we enjoy. And uh, you know what, Bob? If you want to go first, go ahead. Uh, I, I have to go with what I watched last night, and that was Mandalorian number three issue. Uh, uh, issue episode number three. That's all right. Uh, man, Bo Katan showing up. Uh, Katie Sackhoff is Bo Katan. Loved it. End of the episode. Ahsoka Tano being messaged. I completely geeked out. It was an amazing episode. Yeah. Um, I've been watching it. I subscribed to Disney again just for this. Mm-hmm. The second episode, I think pretty much a lot of people didn't enjoy the second episode all that much. It was okay, but it's all right. You know, the egg thing was kind of weird. And yeah. Stuff. But the third episode, I, I watched it first thing Friday morning. Thought it was great. Um, my pick is an older, oh, it's not too old, but it's a sci fi series. It's on Netflix. The whole series is on there. It's called The 4400. I've seen that, but I haven't watched it. Okay. Uh, the 4400 is about 4,400 people have been taken all throughout time. Okay. All throughout time, like 1910. To whatever current year the show's in. And then all of a sudden, all 4,400 people arrive back, come back. That's right. I think, uh, like, all people throughout history that have been mentioned as vanishing. Yes, like, they've all like, vanished. Like the pilots from the uh, Bermuda Triangle. Yes, yeah. Uh, they, they, all 4,500 people have vanished. And they all come back all, all at once. They show up like this, some town in Oregon or uh, up in the Pacific Northwest or whatnot. Mm-hmm. I think so. And uh, it's pretty much a little X-Files type thing. And but it's a great series because not only did they come back, but most of them, I think maybe all of them have um, kind of have abilities now, and like some of them are a little nuttier than others, right? And like these people are like the chosen people, and I don't want to give it all away, but there's four seasons. It didn't end. They didn't. They didn't renew it. So that's the only unfortunate thing. It wasn't done. After the four seasons, they still had one season to go that would have wrapped it up. Mm-hmm. So we never got that final season. So that's that's the only negative about this show is you never see what it was supposed to end up. Hmm. Uh, but really, if you like science fiction and um, if you like mythology TV shows and with a little bit of individual episodes because they throw that in, kind of like the, what the X-Files did. You know, sure. they always had that mythology going on during the show and then they had individual standalone episodes. They do that in the 4400. And uh, I really like it. So go to Netflix. All four seasons are on there. It's a good show. So. Awesome. Awesome. I have to check it out. Yeah. Um, you know what? That's, that's it, man. We squeezed everything in this episode. We did it. This is how it's going to be. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna try our best to keep this within an hour and ten minutes. We're going to have segments like this. Um, graphics on the screen and all sorts of neat stuff. And we're going to try to stick to this as close as possible. Give or take a few minutes here and there. But I really enjoyed our conversation. I enjoyed yeah. uh, uh, some of the things. I liked the Was It Good segment. I, I like that as well. I think that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So um, I do want to uh, say real quick, we normally don't mention the topic for next week, uh, but I want to talk about it really quick because yeah. it's um, it's um, we're going to hit on something that we normally wouldn't hit on, and uh, but we want to be respectful about it. And we're not looking to... Uh, uh, make anyone mad or uncomfortable or whatnot. And we're not trying to push our uh, views or anything. We just want to have a conversation. We want to hear what you guys have to say. So next week's topic is, do you think comic books are too political or have an agenda behind them? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, we want to hear from you. We want to hear what you have to say. We're going to talk about it next week. Uh, I'm asking right now, please be respectful. Especially in the comments. Yes. Uh, we're going to re- be respectful when we talk about this. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not a quote comics gate thing. No. I don't. I can't even really tell you what that is to be honest. But I've heard that term not floating anymore. around. <laughs> um, this is just w- us wanting to hear your opinions and what your thoughts. And it doesn't necessarily have to be current comic books, right? You I, you can think of comics back in the sixties or the seventies yeah. when they were hitting on really big social issues even at the back time. in the forties, World War Two. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So there's all sorts of different areas. Just don't. Just don't think about it as just in the moment right now. Yeah, we're talking about through the history of comics and what that uh, political or agenda that might be behind them, how that translated to us as the reader throughout the years. Because honestly, um, 
I think that a lot of stuff that they touched on when I was a kid helped me. Yeah. And helped me form an educated opinion because they brought it to me in a certain way where I would digest it better. So, but it should be an interesting topic. I'm curious to see what the comments are. Like I said, please be respectful. We're going to be respectful when we're talking about it. We're going to try to uh, have as many uh, different voices as possible. And we'll kind of tell you what we think as well. Yeah, I think it's going to be an interesting conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, very much so. Um, you know what? That's it, man. That's that's the show. That was a good show today. That was a good show. I like that. <laughs> like I said, he caught here is all spicy and oh, stuff. spicy. Yeah, I don't know. What are you going to do? <laughs> but, uh, Bob, real quick, why don't you tell him about TKO? Yeah, TKO Studios is putting out a lot of great stuff. Uh, they got their third wave of comic books that have hit. They've sent me some pre-release uh, reviews. Uh, there's one that I've been reading uh, here lately called uh, Strange Days and Savage Nights. It's kind of a werewolf thing. Yeah. Love the artwork inside of it. Uh, I'll definitely be reviewing that that one coming up here pretty soon. But if you go to TKO Studios uh, and uh, you see something that you like, enter the code EVERYTHING20, you get 20% off uh, your purchase. And that's a great deal. Awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I have to borrow those books. I might read them. Well, I probably won't read them. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, right? Don't forget to go to his channel, Everything Comics. Mm -hmm. He's doing videos again, apparently. That's kind of nice. <laughs> I've got my bugs worked out. He got his bugs worked out. We did the battle draft. He's got some other stuff. Yeah. Probably some unboxings coming up, I think, right? Yep, I got a, a, a mail, a, a mystery mail episode that's happening on Tuesday. There you go. So, Everything Comics featured channel. Link is down below. All that good stuff. Bob, you guys know who it is. He's Thanks, been here guys. like 50 episodes. Give me a point. <laughs> Shouldn't even have to bother anymore, right? I know. Come on. All right, everyone, that's it. I want to say thank you for your time. Appreciate it. And uh, you know what? Don't forget to like and subscribe. You know what to do. We'll see you next time. Bye.